Right then guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for part 19 in my Grand Prix Manager 2 series, Managing Jordan. Now, I know it's been quite a while since the previous episode, in fact, even on the day I'm recording this video, it's been a month and a day since the previous episode was released, so I'll just give you a quick reminder of what happened in the previous episode. So firstly, there was the Spanish Grand Prix around the circuit to Catalonia, and things were going quite well there, until... Olivier Panis retired from the lead of the Grand Prix and that's only because when he came into the pits I forgot to put on a new set of tyres so he was still out on the original set of tyres they then punctured blew up whatever he had to retire from the lead of the race unfortunately thankfully Rubens Barrichello for Benetton also retired and then that just left Gerhard Berger and Mika Hakkinen in the end Gerhard Berger won the Grand Prix with Mika Hakkinen in second Damon Hill in the Sauber came third, and Johnny Herbert in the Williams came fourth. Then we had the second Grand Prix in that episode, the Pacific Grand Prix around Ida. And we qualified down in 19th and 20th because, much like at the Spanish Grand Prix, I forgot to fit on the new set of tyres. However, this time it was between practice and qualifying, so they were still out on the same worn tyres that they used in practice and qualifying because the game's... Well, the game's brilliant like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We qualified in 19th and 20th. Thankfully, within the 107% rule, so we were actually allowed to start the race. We didn't score any points, unsurprisingly, considering we qualified down in 19th and 20th. I think Gerhard Berger finished in 8th, so if we were just a few years later on down the line, we would have scored points, but anyway, it doesn't matter. In this point system, we didn't. Thankfully, once again, a Benetton driver retired. Mika Hakkinen retired from 2nd place, and that just left Rubens Barrichello, who only scored 2 points, Finally, we had the French Grand Prix, Michael Schumacher won, Jean Lacy came second, Jacques Villeneuve third, Olivier Panis in fifth, because I put both of my French drivers in, because Gerhard Berger has got quite a... Well, he's got enough of a lead in the Drivers' Championship, and he certainly did heading into that Grand Prix, so I thought, since we got two French drivers, I may as well make both French drivers race in the French Grand Prix. And it was also good because Benetton, I mean, it's amazing how many mistakes I made in the previous episode and how little Benetton were able to capitalise on it, because Benetton scored no points that French Grand Prix. Hakkinen finished 8th and Rubens Barrichello down in 10th, and they qualified in 3rd and 4th. Anyway, the Drivers' Championship, Gerhard Berger is leading it by 2 points, and that's despite the fact he hasn't even done every race this season. Hakkinen's in 2nd, Barrichello's in 3rd, there's only 2 points separating 3rd from 2nd and 2nd from 1st. Michael Schumacher isn't too far behind, but he would need to... He would need more consistent... Consistently good finishes, to be honest, but... Still, um... I mean, he's still in there, realistically. He's only 12 points behind Gerhard Berger, and we've done... 9 of the 16 races this season. And the Constructors' Championship, Jordan were only 10 points behind Benetton. We actually closed the gap in the Constructors' Championship over the course of the previous episode. And as I said, there were so many mistakes made in the previous episode. I mean, we lost out on 10 points in the Spanish Grand Prix alone, purely because Olivier Panasov forgot to fit new tyres on his car. And then, I mean, and then qualifying for the, for the Pacific Grand Prix. Who knows how many points we could have scored there, but certainly more than zero if we actually were able to qualify. Anyway, that's enough reminiscing of the previous nine Grand Prix, and in fact the previous two seasons. So let's just look forward to the next seven Grand Prix, and in fact... The final seven Grand Prix that I'm going to cover in full in this series. Yeah, so we're not going to do practice. Nothing to gain from it. So we're just going to head straight into qualifying. Okay, so we should do well here. we got a Renault engine. Ah. Okay, well. I don't think me not doing practice has had anything to do with this. But McLaren have actually got a decent result. I mean, they started getting good in the previous episode. Jacques Villeneuve was getting decent finishes. He won the Pacific Grand Prix. And sure, he only won it because Mika Hakkinen retired. But still, McLaren, they have really upped the ante in recent races. Coulthard has qualified in first. Jacques Villeneuve in second. In fact, the fact David Coulthard has outqualified Jacques Villeneuve is a shock. There's both Benettons, both Jordans, both Ferraris, both Sauber's, both Williams, both Minardi's. Mark Goosens for Pacific. There's both Arrows. Then Bertrand Gasho in the other Pacific. Then both 40s, and then both Simtex, which, unsurprisingly, haven't been able to qualify within the 107% rule. They have done it on the odd occasion this season. They have actually been able to qualify and take part in 
the odd race, but yeah, not this time. But then again, this is a this is a power circuit, Silverstone, and Simtech they've got the least powerful engine of anyone on the grid. Although I think they've got the same engine as Pacific. The difference is is that Pacific have got better people and more experience in Formula One. So then here we are about to start the British Grand Prix around Silverstone. Right, so we got both McLarens on both Benettons on both Jordans on both Ferraris and then I believe it was both Salvers. Very strange qualifying results. But anyway, the 1998, God we're on the 1998 season now aren't we? You can tell it's been a long time since I recorded the previous episode. But anyway, the 1998 British Grand Prix is underway and we've still got David Coulthard leading his home Grand Prix from Jacques Villeneuve in second, then it's still both Benettons, both Jordans, both Ferraris. I'll be honest, I don't think anything has changed at the start of this Grand Prix. Right, Mika Hakkinen's come into the pits already, so we gained a place. Where is Hakkinen? He's down in ninth now, okay. So, in, okay, that screams to me that he's doing a free stop strategy, which Generally speaking, that never works. Generally, you want to do as few stops as possible. David Coulthard coming into the pits. That might also be a sign of a free stop. I mean, you could still do a two-stop in theory, but then one of the other stints is going to have to be considerably longer. Whereas we just, What we always do is we always do three stints of pretty much equal length. So, I mean, Gerhard Berger, he's going to do 20 laps, then 20 laps, then 21 laps. So, brand new tyres... 20 laps worth of fuel. Yep, I think that's all good. 9.2 seconds in the pits. Olivier Paris is leading the Grand Prix for the time being. Sure, he'll have clean air. And he'll have a very light car because there's hardly any fuel in it. But he's also got very worn tyres. So, I'm not sure if this overcut going longer into the race will actually work for Paris. But, hopefully, he can actually gain some positions. Hopefully so, anyway. 20 laps worth of fuel. I've actually remembered to put some new tyres on Panis's car this time round. 9.3 second stop. And Panis... Panis is in fifth. No, he's not in fifth. He's in third. No, no, sorry. Berger's in third. Panis is in second. Well, let's have a look at the actual gaps. So, Panis is there. So, there's Jacques Villeneuve. Long gone. He's perfected. The strategy so far anyway, I know we've only done just over a third of the race, but Villeneuve started in second, went longer than his teammate, and now he's well he's been able to pull out a massive gap on everyone. We were stuck in traffic, so we're quite away behind Villeneuve. Hopefully we can close the gap. Burgers in third just about got out ahead of David Coulthard, who came in just a little too early by the looks of it. Then you got Barrichello in fifth, and Hakkinen isn't even in the points positions. Hakkinen's in 8th, he's behind Irvine and Katayama. Right, hang on, Jack Villeneuve, it says he's in the pits. I think Jack Villeneuve came into the pits and has come out ahead of us before we've even come into the pits. Long and short of it, Jack Villeneuve, I believe, is an entire pit stop ahead of us. Anyway, 21 laps worth of fuel for Gerhard Berger. And I imagine wherever we come out... Once the pit stops are all done, once, wherever we come out, that will be our finishing position, unless Villeneuve retires, which I, I somehow doubt. You don't really get McLaren's retiring. Okay, well, look how Katayama's retired from fifth place, I believe. That's promoted Coulthard up a position, Damon Hill up a position. Right, so we got two British Grand... We've got two British F1 drivers in the points for their home Grand Prix. And in fact, if someone else retires, like Villeneuve, or Barrichello for that matter, right. If Barrichello retires, that now means we've got Eddie Irvine. Jacques Villeneuve's leading. And Benetton, it looks like they're not going to score any points. David Coulthard coming into the pits with just a lap or two to go. Hopefully, for his sake, he hasn't actually lost a position from that. But anyway, it's Jacques Villeneuve in first. And Olivier Pants in second. Gerhard Berger in third. But was Coulthard Kulf did still finish in fourth, from Damon Hill in fifth, and Eddie Irvine in sixth. That seems to be something which happens a lot. I think that happened at the previous British Grand Prix, where we had quite a few of the British F1 drivers finishing in the points, low end of the points, but still. I mean, Johnny Herbert wasn't too far away from the points. Neither was Brundle. In fact, every British driver finished in the 
Nope, I was going to say every British driver finished in the top 10, but of course Kelvin Burt didn't because... Well, partly because he retired and partly because he's in a 40. And how well was he realistically going to do? But look at that. Jacques Villeneuve in the McLaren won the British Grand Prix from Olivier Panis in the Jordan. He won it by over three quarters of a minute. Okay, well, this is just a regular story at this point. I mean, even though we've got the best security firm, this always happens. It doesn't matter what team you are, where you are on the grid, it's irrelevant. You always get parts being stolen. Or, or lost or where, wherever copied you, that always happens regardless of who you are and what security firm you've got which makes you think they're kind of pointless right Frank Lagrush will miss the next three races but I'm gonna find out who's actually replacing him and Jordan hang on that's a good point actually I think I think we're now joint top in the constructors championship yes we are joint top in the constructors championship Ourselves and Benetton, Jordan and Benetton, we're both on 70 points. Then you've got McLaren, then Williams, then Ferrari. Ferrari have really underperformed. And last year it was Eddie Irvine who was underperforming. This year it's now... I was going to say it's... Ka well, yeah, it is more Katiyama. Well, I don't know, because I think Katiyama was doing better than Irvine at the previous Grand Prix until he retired. And anyway, we've got the German Grand Prix around Hockenheim, one of my favourite Grand Prix on the calendar, one of my favourite tracks on the calendar. And this, this Grand Prix, I will actually do practice, just because I want to double check that a one-stop is possible. Yeah, I mean, it has been, we've done it in the past. So yes, I guess I'll just see you at the end of practice for the German Grand Prix. Okay, so we're at the end of my running and practice, and as you can see, I brimmed a 60% fuel tank John Alesi, he's done 27 laps, and the tyres just about have some life left in them. So we're going to fit some new tyres on, because I do not want to make the same mistake I did at the Pacific Grand Prix. And yet, in fact, Gerhard Berger, same amount of laps, 1% more life left on his tyres. So that's all good. Yeah, that's all good. I don't think there's anything we need to change. They've both got a 60% fuel tank on the car, which means they're able to do a one-stop. Normally... I have a 40% fuel tank, I think that's the lowest you can go, yes, a 40% fuel tank, so you do just under half distance, this time we're doing just over half distance, so we can do a one stop, anyway, actually, hang on, let's check the practice results, actually, is there anything interesting? Not really, I mean, Eddie Irvine in second is a slight surprise, considering, well, I mean, this is a power circuit, obviously, it is the king of power circuits, and... Ferrari, I mean, I believe Ferrari's engine is the second most powerful on the grid. I believe so anyway, yeah, because I think it's the Renault engine. Then Ferrari, then... Then it might be the Mercedes, or it might be the Ford engine that Williams and Sauber use, but I think it's just about the Mercedes. The Mercedes engine's better anyway, because it's lighter in terms of power... In terms of power-to-weight ratio for that engine, it's, it's, uh, it's a very good one. Yeah, so that's practice, so we'll just head on into qualifying. Hopefully, we can get a decent qualifying position. Okay, well. In fact, hang on, there's a team missing. Oh, I've just realised there's only 20. It's Pacific. Pacific haven't turned up to this race. Right. I'll be honest, I think there was a glitch with this track in this game, because I think last season, Ferrari didn't turn up on McLaren. What I one team didn't turn up last season to this Grand Prix. I think it's just a glitch with this track on this game. Uh, and this time Pacific haven't turned up. Or it could just be a massive coincidence and Pacific are actually running into financial issues. That is... I was going to say that's possible, but I think they've got paid drivers anyway. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Benetton, they've locked out the front row of the grid. From Ferrari on the second row, Jordan on the third row, then it's McLaren... Williams, Sauber, Minardi. I'll be honest, this is pretty much a ranking almost of the team's horsepower figures. If you sort around Jordan and Ferrari, I believe it would pretty much be a listing of the team's horsepower figures from most to least. Yeah, because it would be the Renault runners, then Ferrari, then Mercedes, then the best Ford engine, which Williams and Sauber have got. Minardi, I know, have a better engine than 40, and Simtech. Pacific would be there with Simtech as well. Arrows, I'm not sure about. I honestly do not know how the Arrows engines 
horsepower compares to... I imagine the Arrows car has got a better engine than 40. Maybe better than Minardi. I really don't think any team has changed their engine supply all season apart from... Apart from Williams and Jordan. Because we went from Peugeot to Renault and Williams went from Renault to Ford. Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Those are the qualifying results. So that means we've got Ferrari to clear. But hopefully the one-stop strategy can get us a decent finish. Hopefully. But the worrying thing is, is that Rubens Barrichello, who's taken pole position, he's 1.8 seconds quicker than our quickest driver, Jean Alesi. So, yeah, that's quite worrying. The 1998 German Grand Prix around Hockenheim is underway. And I believe we're not going to see any changes in position at the start because we rarely do i'll be honest in fact on this game we rarely see overtakes as a whole to be honest overtakes are rare i mean one this track might be an exception and monza they might be exceptions possibly but anyway look at that benetton have already opened up a sizable gap on ferrari oh yeah i should also mention ricardo zonta who's actually already got a 10 second stop go penalty Ricardo Zonta is the driver who's replaced Frank Lagerush. And I feel like Ricardo Zonta's done a race before in this series. And Barrichello's coming to the pits already, so's Eddie Irvine. Although I think Barrichello's going to come in the pits and is still going to come out in second. Yeah, alright, so we cannot possibly compete with Benetton then. Yeah, this is just going to be damage limitation. Although Katayama's worked his way up into second. All we can possibly do... Is just hope. Yeah, because Hacken is coming into the pits now, so I don't think they're doing one stop strategies. All we can possibly hope for now is that we beat Ferrari. Benetton are long gone. All we can possibly hope for now is that we beat Ferrari thanks to a one stop strategy and that Benetton retire. They just retire both of their cars, which is. Well, I don't know. Their, their finishing record recently hasn't been brilliant. And also, one thing I should point out is that Jean Lacy is beating Gerhard Berger, which. I mean, it's been a trend recently where, in fact, it's been a trend all series where Panis or Alesi quite often beats Gerhard Berger ever since, ever since we brought in this policy of swapping out our number two driver every race, ever since we brought in that, uh, that policy, that philosophy, ever since we've done that, they've always beaten Gerhard Berger. It's like, it's almost like they do a race, take a break, and then because they take a break, they actually come back. A better driver. Whereas Gerhard Berger, it's almost like he's getting fatigued because he's having to do every race. Either that or our number one driver and best driver statistically, and in fact statistically one of the best drivers in this game, is slower than Panas and Alesi. Well I don't know, I would believe, I could believe that he's slower than Alesi, but I can't believe that Gerhard Berger, Gerhard Berger is slower than Olivier Panis. I don't buy that for a second. I mean, if you look, if you look at the star ratings, Gerhard Berger's star rating on this game is just unbelievable. But anyway, right, so we're going to come out of the pits in. Okay, well, Gerhard Berger, I think, has actually jumped his teammate in the pits, although Alacy's losing places worryingly. In fact, both of our guys are. Right, well, this is worrying because both McLaren guys have actually jumped... Our guys, so that means that we're not even in the points position, right? So, I think this race is going to be extremely boring now because we're not going to score well for the time being any points. And Benetton, well, Benetton, they just run away with it. They're going to score 16 points, and by the looks of it, Jordan, we're going to score none. Hang on, wait, what a second one! Ricardo Zonta has amassed two 10 second stop go penalties in the same race. How bad do you have to be to do that? I don't care if he's race rusty and he's in a 40. How bad do you have to be to get two 10 second stop go penalties in the same Grand Prix? Well, I said I was looking forward to this Grand Prix, but I take that back because, well, Mika Hakkinen, he's about to win the Grand Prix. Rubens Barrichello's teammate is only 2.3 seconds behind. Katayama in third is 46 seconds behind. And I think... Yeah, Benetton have scored 16 points this Grand Prix, and we've scored one. I don't quite know how we weren't able to jump anyone by doing less pit stops, and I'm also more confused by the fact that McLaren was somehow able to jump us in the pits. 
No idea how well, okay, at the very least, well both of them did, but Berger did overtake David Coulthard, but not Jacques Villeneuve. Okay, we don't even know how close he was to Jacques Villeneuve, because they were all lapped. In fact, actually, that is something. Both Benetton drivers lapped everyone, apart from the two Ferrari drivers. If that doesn't show just how dominant they were this Grand Prix, then I don't know what does. Right, here we go, in qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Okay, that's not great. In fact, we've, all, we've got all 22 people taking part, not only in qualifying, but in the race. Pacific have turned up, and they're actually going to be doing this race. However, Simtech, this is big news, Simtech have qualified. Both of their guys have qualified comfortably within the 107% rule. You've got Chatterella, however you pronounce his name, I still don't know. To be honest, I still don't really know who he is, but you've still got Chatterella, who was two seconds quicker than the 107% cutoff time, and even Hideki Noda beat the cutoff time by half a second. But worryingly for the Hungarian Grand Prix, we've got both McLarens on the front row from both Ferraris. Then it's Olivier Panis, who of course is coming in, replacing John Alesi. He's in 5th, Barrichello's in 6th, Gerhard Berger's in 7th, Hakkinen, actually to be fair, I didn't realise how far down the field Hakkinen was, he's in 10th, Mecca Hakkinen was beaten by both Williams, but in fact Williams, this is the sort of track which would suit them, because it's the Hungara ring, it's not a power circuit, so this would sort of suit, I mean basically the point is, is Williams, their main downfall at the moment is their engine, their lack of power, but that would be less apparent at a circuit like this, which could also be, it could also explain why McLaren have done so well, although McLaren, they have definitely done something, because ever since the Pacific Grand Prix in the previous episode, ever since then, they've been on top, they've just been a very quick competitive team, it's, it's been the first time they've been competitive since the start of the last season, so McLaren, they've definitely done something. I don't know whether they fitted a driver aid or developed a new part or something, but it must be a driver aid because it's it was such a sudden, rapid and consistent change of pace. So McLaren have definitely done something and they were quick at the previous track and this one and they're completely contrasting. But yeah, going back to my point, McLaren, they got the Mercedes engine, which is quite powerful, but very light. And this is sort of the perfect track for it. So then, we know the Hungara Ring circuit, it has produced some very exciting races this series. I remember the first Hungarian Grand Prix we did, where there was an entire episode, an entire video, dedicated to just that one Grand Prix. It's produced some very exciting races in the past, and look at the weather. It's overcast, potentially it will rain at some point this race. And if it does, boy, we've got a race in our hands. But anyway, the 1998 Hungarian Grand Prix is underway. Norberto Fontana has stalled his car and is out of the Grand Prix already. Right, so already, I mean it was amazing, I thought we were going to actually have 22 runners for a Grand Prix this season, but well, not anymore because Fontana is already out of the Grand Prix, so, well there you have it, so we've got 21 runners, both Simtex are still in, and at the moment, at the moment nothing's really changed at the front. In fact, Jacques Villeneuve, whoa, Jacques Villeneuve has got a 10 second stop go penalty. He's down into 14th place and Jacques Villeneuve, who is leading the Grand Prix. Yeah, wow, that's um, that's massively affected his Grand Prix. And Jacques Villeneuve, I just don't see him scoring any points now. Well, that's one guy out of the way. Bertrand Gachot has retired. It hasn't even started raining and already there's been quite a lot of drama. Oh, no, 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 what's this? It's just started raining. Okay, now from memory, I believe, we're fine to stay out on the dry tyres until it says it's wet on track. Well, there's an issue. They need the blue flags. Hideki Noda is leading a massive train. Okay, so he needs to lap through. Jos Verstappen is about to lap him. Kenny Brack. Coolfod needs to lap. Brack and Verstappen who need to lap Noda and Ricardo Zonta's in the middle. Then you've got Katayama, Berger. I mean, look at this. This is such a ridiculous train. Pretty much everyone's there. Apart from apart from car number two, that's Rubens Barrichello. 
But it still says... Oh, no, it says... Okay, it says the track is wet. Right. Okay, so we got to bring someone into the pits. Okay, Gerhard Berg is coming into the pits. Panis will come in on the next lap because you can't double stack in this game. I remember... That was quite a big mistake I remember I made at the start of this series was assuming you could double stack. I don't really... I don't even know why I wanted to double stack. I think purely just to make it easy. But anyway... What lap is it? Oh, this is fun. So now we got to change the whole pit stop scenario. Okay, we'll... We'll come in on lap. We'll say we'll come in on lap 50. And put in... Yeah. Because we can't... We can't assume that, that it will be raining for the rest of the Grand Prix. Because even if it does... The, the fuel tank isn't physically big enough to, for us to put in enough fuel to not have to stop again. So, also I'm not 100% sure the tyres would actually make it, but I think they would. Yeah, so we'll come in again on lap 50. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, right. This isn't good. I forgot to change the first lap. I mean, I realised... I did realise that I put in 25 laps worth of fuel thinking it was lap 25 and it wasn't. So I had just told Gerhard Berger to conserve his fuel. What I hadn't accounted for was the fact he was actually going to come in again. Basically the point is I thought it was lap 25 even though it says right by Gerhard Berger's face the lap it is. Um, can we just cancel? And then he just goes straight back out? Does that work? Well I think I think we minimised the time loss there. But Gerhard Berg is down in 11th. Panis is in 6th. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, I'm telling Gerhard Berger to conserve fuel. Oh, of course. Panis has done the same thing. Right, well, this is fun. Okay, so we've just lost a load of positions for no real reason. Right, you'll never guess what, but the track is drying up once again. In fact, it's officially dry. I bought in Olivier Panis when it said the track was still drying, which I think was a slight mistake. It's just said the track is dry, so we're bringing in Gerhard Berger. He's got 20 laps worth of fuel. That will take him to lap 55. New tyres. There's no... No, this is all fine. This is definitely all fine. 4.8 seconds in the pits, and... Uh, who knows? Who? Everyone's coming into the pits at the moment. And we are... 9th for 13th. Yeah, we've definitely messed up the strategy this race, but... Hakkinen's only in 4th, and Barrichello... Barrichello's in 11th. Yeah, he's made just as many mistakes this race as we have, so... Thankfully, at least compared to Benetton, we're not doing too badly. Barrichello's just retired. Okay, well that is some good news from my perspective. I just really hope that it doesn't... I oh, know I didn't want to do that. I really hope that it doesn't rain again because we might be able to get a decent finish if it doesn't rain again. Or even if it does, as long as it rains after everyone else has come into the pits again, we should be fine. Oh, hang on, Eddie Irvine's also retired as well. Right then, so with quite a few big names retiring, it means we might be able to get a decent finish at this rate. And also, I know that we don't have to come into the pits again. Other people... Other people surely will. I'll be surprised. I mean, at least most of them are going to have to. Oh, and it's raining again. Fantastic. Right then, so Gerhard Berger, I believe he's coming into the pits now. Yes, there he goes. Coming into the pits. Okay. Wet tyres. And... Okay, it's lap 65. Yeah, we don't need to do anything about the fuel. We've got two laps extra fuel. That's fine. Wet tyres, 4.1 seconds in the pit. Thankfully, it's quite a short pit stop. Oh, I'm going to try and bring Panis in now. I don't know whether the game would like it. Okay, Berger's just left his pit box, which means hopefully Panis can actually be serviced. Yeah, we don't need to do anything about the fuel. 4.1 seconds in the pit. Okay, so... I. I don't think anyone else has come in yet. I didn't notice anyone else coming in, and we pitted the second it said the track's wet. So hopefully we're going to be gaining a lot of time on everyone else, because I imagine, I imagine a lot of people are still out there on slicks. Gerhard Berger is in 6th place. Hakkinen's in 7th. Okay, so we've got the jump on Mika Hakkinen. This still isn't really massively great in terms of the Constructors' Championship battle, because 
well, we're only scoring one point more than Benetton. Even now, we're still only scoring one point more than Benetton. So, we're only closing the gap by one point. But still, hopefully, it's also, well, it's also slightly good for Berger's Drivers' Championship hunt. Panis, what are you doing? Why are you down in ninth? Anyway, I think this is it. I think this is how the race is going to end. It's going to end with Catty. Okay, the track's drying. It won't dry out in time. Well, it might do, but if it, I don't, oh, I don't imagine anyone will pit. So I think Uko Katayama is going to take another Formula One Grand Prix win from Michael Schumacher in second. Katayama, he replaced Michael Schumacher in here, and now he's beaten him. David Coulthard is in third. And there are the results. Gerhard Berger was the highest placed person who was lapped. Then you got Mika Hakkinen in fifth, Martin Brundle sixth, Johnny Herbert seventh, Villeneuve, and then Panis in ninth. Okay, so we got Martin Brundle who scored a point for Sauber. Actually, actually, yeah, Damon Hill really. Although we don't know the time gaps, I was going to say Martin Brundle did quite a lot better than Damon Hill, but we don't really know the time gaps. We just know that they were both lapped once. And did a Simtech driver finish? No. Oh, no, actually, okay. Okay, I assume not, because it said Chatterella was seven laps down, but he was actually still running, even though he was seven laps down. And then, okay, Noda spun off. But then again, I remember Noda... I remember Noda holding up everyone. Remember that train he had where pretty much the entire field was in it? Yeah, it probably, it's probably best that he was actually cleared off the racetrack. So, I think that is everything for this episode. First pole for Jacques Villeneuve. I guess it means first pole this season. Okay, oh great. Next time it's the Belgian Grand Prix around Spa. That's going to be an interesting one. That's not what I want. So, the Drivers' Championship, okay. I believe at the start of this episode, Berger had a two-point lead. Now, he's losing by two points. Mika Hakkinen has got a two-point lead now in the Drivers' Championship. Gerhard Berg is in second, Rubens Barrichello third, Jacques Villeneuve is now the best of the rest in fourth place. It's still very much a free horse battle for the Drivers' Championship. I mean, it's still... Barrichello is still within a race win's worth of points of Mika Hakkinen. So anything could really happen there. Panis has got 20 points, John Alisi's only got 8. But I think Panis has done more races anyway. I believe so anyway. And here's the screen I don't want to look at, the Constructors' Championship. Yeah, we're 14 points behind Benetton. I mean, we've got second wrapped up. We're going to finish at least second this championship. But last season, we won the Constructors' Championship. The season before, Benetton won the Constructors' Championship. And this is really the decider. This is the decider season. So, you know, there's a lot to play for, to be honest. And anyway, so, yeah. Oh, we've got four more races. Four more races. In theory, anything can happen. The Drivers' Championship is certainly up for grabs and the Constructors' Championship it's it's certainly plausible that we could still win the Constructors' Championship but a 14 point gap but then again I think at the start of this episode I think we were losing the Constructors' Championship by 10 points then we were level and now we're miles behind again so a lot can change in the space of a race especially I just really hope that in one of the remaining four races Benetton don't do very well that's what I'm hoping for because Benetton's a very odd team. Some tracks, like at Hockenheim, they're dominant, and then at the other tracks, they're just nowhere. It's, uh, yeah, they're a very strange team. But then again, it's the same for McLaren, same for Williams. Look at that, Sauber and Sick scored 13 points, and then you've got Arrows, Minardi, 40, Simtek, and Pacific, who all haven't scored points as of yet, and are extremely unlikely to ever score points this season. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, if you did please leave a like, comment down below, and next time I'll see you for the Belgian Grand Prix, and in fact of course, because there's only 4 more races left this season, there's only going to be 2 races per video in the final 2 videos. Well here's the plan for the series, there's going to be the next episode, then the one after, then the season montage, and then a couple of season reviews, I already discussed this in the first episode in this season. So what's that, part 15? But I've already discussed, I'll do like um, a video summarising an entire season for the next two or three seasons, I reckon. It depends how long it remains interesting for and how long it actually remains even vaguely recognisable to this season. But anyway, yes, as I said, I'll see you guys next time for the Belgian Grand Prix around Spa-Francorchamps. And then straight after that, I think it's the Italian Grand Prix around Monza.